Iron Man 3 was a tipping for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As a movie star, Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Tony Stark and deliver Shane Black dialogue. Iron Man 3 has him doing both so, why is it still considered divisive in some quarters? Directed and co-written by Black, 2013's seventh installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, is a film of firsts and lasts. Straightforwardly, it was the first movie released after 2012's The Avengers but the last stand on an Iron Man movie. And in practice, it's the first Marvel Studios outing to reckon with what came before. And the last one to upend fan expectations so gleefully. One year after the crowd-pleasing team-up. Iron Man 3 gives us a darkly funny, willfully subversive trilogy closer with nothing like the current MCU's commitment to a status quo. In the aftermath of his near-death experience and sure armor date with Earth's mightiest heroes. Tony Stark is an anxious wreck. He doesn't sleep at night, he has panic attacks at the thought of the Battle of New York. And he spends his days obsessively building a weird and wonderful array of new armors for all eventualities. But when danger arrives, it's in the shape of a terrorist frontman calling himself the Mandarin, Ben Kingsley. Bringing destruction to his own doorstep, Tony is left out in the cold, embarking on a low-tech investigation of this new threat and his extremist-powered human bombs. When the film hit cinemas worldwide in May 2013, the threequel Fall and Rise plot structure would have been familiar to anyone who'd enjoyed Skyfall or The Dark Knight Rises in cinemas the year before. But the sticking point for Iron Man 3's detractors is that it's not nearly as solemn about it. After all, it's a Shane Black movie, it's even set at Christmas. More than that though, it's designed as a kappa for Iron Man rather than a table setting for the next eight films. Even the already standard post-credit scene is a punchline rather than a teaser. 2021's Shankai and the Legend of the Ten Rings went one further, dealing with another problematic adaptation by replacing the title character's dad from the comics, actual Fu Manchu, with this real Mandarin, Tony Leung, and further bringing back Slattery. A one-joke character, to deliver crucial exposition, he's functional, but without the fun of his original appearance. Kingsley will also appear in the forthcoming Disney Plus series Wonder Man. As for Tony, whose character development is neatly wrapped up at the end of this one. Age of Ultron all but ignores how he gives up the suits at the end of this one to stick him back in action with the rest of the team. Downey did sign for more movies, starting with Captain America, Civil War and he got a more definitive full stop in 2019's Avengers, Endgame. But this well done finale was retconned into a semicolon. Indeed, Iron Man 3 marks the last time its standalone approach ever touches the core Avengers cast. Successive Captain America movies tee up further Avengers installments to one extent or another. Thor is Earth's spongiest hero depending on what the story arc needs from him. And even the long belated solo Black Widow movie, Something, Something, Toy Making, now seems to have been tailor made to introduce the cast of next year's Thunderbolts movie. Some of the further backlashes to Marvel post Endgame are partly because audiences don't want stories to go smaller again. As this one did after the first Avengers but also that the movies are neither standalone stories nor apparently building to something in particular. Ten years and twenty-odd films later, Iron Man 3 seems to be the last known sighting of a self-contained Marvel movie. Iron Man 3 is streaming on Disney+. Plus.